Morning. Morning. <clears throat> Morning. How's it going? So good. Good. How are you doing? Good. Good, good. Wait just another moment or two and then we'll get started. I saw a couple of other people trying to join and then disappear. They may be having some technical difficulties this morning. Okay, well, I think we should go ahead and get started and uh, not go any later. Uh, thank you for joining me today. I sure appreciate it and always look forward to this. So uh, today, I what I want to share, what I want to talk about, what I've been thinking about was actually sparked by something that happened yesterday. Uh, I was uh, looking at, contemplating, thinking about the... Uh, 11th step in the 12 steps program and uh, discussing it with some people. And it says, uh, sought through prayer and meditation to improve our conscious contact with God. And the workbook that I was reading as it relates to this said something in, in, in terms of prayer being essentially talking to God and meditating being primarily hearing from God. One was, you know, it's a conversation. One is expressing what we need to. The other is listening or hearing what we need to, or what is trying to be said to us. And I was just sharing with the group that I was talking to that I think meditation, as as we have come to understand it in this sort of modern popular uh, concept, is not about listening to God or listening to really anything except it's it's more in the Buddhist tradition of mindful meditation, which is listening or I mean, 
seeing having the thoughts pass through our minds and then letting them go not we're the observer and as the observer we're seeing that we are not our thoughts and we can observe them and when they appear we let them go and we concentrate on our breathing and to me that is what most people mean when they talk about meditation these days so the concept of meditation mm -hmm. being how you hear from god was uh i just had really i didn't think that was really accurate in the terms of the way most people think these days i think you could think of contemplation as hearing reflection um being still and quiet and open certainly but but not meditation of course if you do meditation in a different way then maybe it's all about listening uh you know there's obviously not just one way to do it but um that so all of that brought me back to one of my all-time favorite quotes from one of my all-time favorite writers and i thought about how i have shared at i have shared this quote at more funerals memorial services celebrations of life than any other quote i've ever used and there's several really good ones from shakespeare from sacred literature from from different things that i've used but this one more than any other and i try to use it in two ways one thinking about the person who is no longer with us but then also challenging us to think about our own lives in in the context of our lives will be over soon and here's the quote by frederick Buechner. listen to your life see it for the fathomless mystery that it is in the boredom and pain of it, no less than in the excitement and gladness. Touch, taste, smell your way to the holy and hidden heart of it, because in the last analysis, all moments are key moments, and life itself is grace. And when it comes to hearing, what we need to hear and wherever you think that comes from one of the greatest ways i believe we can do that is in listening to our lives he goes on to say that if god speaks anywhere it is into our lives that god speaks i want to read it again i'm going to ask you to really think about what he's saying listen to your life see it for the fathomless mystery that it is in the boredom and pain of it, no less than in the excitement and gladness. Touch, taste, smell your way to the holy and hidden heart of it, because in the last analysis, all moments are key moments, and life itself is grace. I believe if we're going to improve our conscious contact with God, with the divine, with the deeper side of life, that it is through our lives and is through our approach to our lives and listening to our lives to, to hear what, what we need, what is trying to be communicated to us. And, you know, I think if we look at some of the patterns in our lives, we'll see that some of the things that we've been slow to learn, we get other opportunities to learn them. Life gives us more than one chance and sometimes many chances. And if I fail over and over again, because life has given me the same opportunity to learn something and I, I, I don't, I didn't catch it the first time. I didn't, I wasn't listening. I wasn't responding in the way I should. And I'll probably get another chance. And if I don't respond and learn that, then I'll probably get another chance. And, you know, it reminds me of, what Confucius said about the way we, we gain wisdom. There's, there's three different primary, primarily three different ways, observation, imitation, and experience. And he says that experience is the most bitter way to learn. And to me, that's related to when that lesson comes again and again and again and, until we learn it. And there's a lot of ways in which life will bring us low, will humble us. 
because we're we've stiffened our necks because we're so hard headed and we don't want to learn and we we refuse our ego says we're fine everything's good but you know I, there's nothing I need to learn I'm all good life says here's another chance here's another chance and I just think listening to our lives this day we're gonna have experiences that can teach us so much a few weeks ago I was reflecting on my life and all the people who have come in and out of my life, the ones that have flowed in and out, the ones that are still in. And I was thinking about how every single person brought with them an opportunity for me, something I could learn, something I could, could make a part of my own, something I could grow from the experience, whether it was difficult, painful, whether the person was uh, unpleasant and unkind, uh, unloving, or whether they were, you know, love itself there's something to learn. And what I was thinking of in that moment of reflection was, I wonder just how many opportunities I didn't take advantage of. And now that person's gone and, and maybe no longer with us, or maybe just have out of my life. And I that's missed opportunities. And so I'm going to try today to take advantage of every opportunity. I'm still going to miss a ton of them, but I'm going to try to listen even more carefully, learn even more and experience and take in the lessons that life has for me this day. Life is our teacher. And I think our best response to every single thing that happens to us is, this is my teacher. This is my teacher. It may not be the lesson that I wanted. It may not be the curriculum that I signed up for, but this is my lesson. And there's something here for me to learn. Would anybody like to respond, share, ask, say anything at all? Thank you so much, Michael. Sorry, I was a little bit late, guys. No uh, what a fantastic topic and um, uh, so much. I've made lots of notes, but... Um, one of the things that does come to mind is um, in my prayer and meditation, one of the things COVID's brought me is some consistency uh, that um, I really uh, have always wanted, but uh, always life seemed to be so pressing. There were so many things and errands that I needed to do, and I needed to do them immediately when I got up. And now I have put uh, the priority, um, well, I have less you know, pressing things now. And uh, the priority is when I get up, uh, I need to do my prayer and meditation. And it's really brought me this uh, uh, sense of groundedness to the day. Um, and I hope to keep it up when things in life change and become more pressing. Um, and I think maybe I will because it's become a real practice. Um, but I was just thinking that part of uh, some of my prayers are uh, very personal, uh, that they've developed um, you know, daily over time. And then um, some of them I take, um, I like this poem, I think it's called the Desiderata and I kind of change it up to make it, um, I may be mispronouncing that, but I change it up a little bit to, um, and uh, at the end of it, it says, um, listen, to, um, listen to others. And I put, I say kind of listen to myself and others, even the dull and ignorant have their stories and I can learn from everyone, even if it's what not to do. That's my change on it. <laughs> everyone can be my teacher, even if it's the example of what not to do. Um, so um, I love that reminder. And, uh, and I love that uh, I have now made this a consistent practice. Um, and uh, it feels like it's just been really um, beneficial. It just makes me more mindful about my day as I go forward um, and what uh, is important. Um, so thanks so much, guys, for being here and love these uh, Meaning Mondays. Thanks. Thank you so much. I was thinking as I was making my to-do list this morning of what really matters and use the word pressing. And, and uh, if you go back to, uh, was it uh, Stephen Covey? you know, talking about the four quadrants, you know, and there's things that seem so urgent, but they're not important. And most of the things that are really important are not very urgent. 
And that's where we need to be focused. And I was, when I was looking at my to-do list and writing it, I was thinking, you know, what matters most? What, what am I going to get to the end of my life and say, damn, why didn't I do more of that? And why didn't I do less of this other shit? And, and that's what I think our focus, where we need to be. Um, but I love the words you use because those things will press on us to say, oh, it's urgent. You got to do this now. You got to answer that phone. You got to answer those emails. You got to go run those errands. And I don't think most of the time they're worth, they're not that important. And so if we could evaluate everything of, you know, what matters most, what um, is going to get me to the life I want, what will my future self be glad that today's self did? Anyone else? I um, I can't believe you brought that quote up because that's that was my quote that I was bringing <laughs> to this session today. The uh, Frederick, um, I, I say, I say, Bochner, but is it's it Be Bigner? Is yeah, that's Bigner. Okay. According to him, Be potato, potato, right? I can't believe um, you have the same quote. Wow! I you just muted yourself. Thank you. All right. That's that's a first. Um, so I, I think this is a, a super um, mature religious vision and um, way of um, thinking about life in every moment. Um, also in Beckner, what did I say it again? Beckner. Okay. Beckner. He, um, I've read a, a little bit of his uh, work, something called listening to your life um another book the sacred journey um and he he what i'm trying to say is that he he's very mature he's 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 very you know this is a grown-up look at life and time's ticking but he always incorporates like um playfulness and 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 free play and yeah now yeah and and just that um naivete um, into his practice, which really resonates with me. I, I know that, you know, when I first became a nurse, I mean, I'm a goofball. I, I think it's one of my gifts, but, um, I, I hide behind it a lot too, you know? And, um, when I first became an, a nurse, an RN, I remember thinking to myself, like, oh, I can't act like me. And, and <laughs> all right, you got them all. <laughs> I'm your recommendations while you're sharing. <laughs> okay. It's like, I, you know, I, I can't, I can't act like this goofy person and do this job. That's like life and death and, you know, putting air into people's lungs to keep them alive and all that. And, and, and I don't know what happened, but at some point I realized like, I don't know if I was listening to my life or just um, gave up trying to be, you know, the mature business person fancy lady or whatever but um i just went i just went with the goofball and it it really worked and i was still able to uh maintain a certain degree of bearing and professionalism and uh so that's i i think he he speaks to that a lot and uh you know listen listen to your inner goofball it's not it's not the dumbest person out there so anyway that's all beautiful I, I really i cannot believe you had the the same quote and what are the chances of that um i this i do have two shelves worth of beekner stuff and I, I would um recommend you reading anything but the the book actually called listening to your life is 365 daily devotional readings from his writings they're pulled from his novels from his nonfiction books um this is an excellent way to start with him if you if you've never read it but the three he's still alive he's like 90 something years old yes. I, I swear he's i think he's still with us he is um he's an incredible writer and thinker he's written uh th essentially three um memoirs the sacred journey and these are uh just so insightful now and then and telling secrets 
And he's, uh, the, this is an example of him listening to his life, these memoirs and him sharing what happens and what it means and what it taught him and um, telling secrets. You know, he says, I am my secrets and you are yours. And his dad committed suicide when he was very young. And his daughter had um, uh, an eating disorder. I forget if it was bulimia or uh, whatever the other one is. But, but you know, he was just just dying inside. Just, just, and yet he was trying to listen. What is life telling me? What is it teaching me? What do I have to learn from this? And anyway, highly, highly recommend him. Anyone else want to share anything, say anything? Part of what Denise said, I think, was that in listening to your life, and you correct me if I'm wrong on this, but in listening to your life, it'll tell you who you are and who you can be. And this sacred gift of our lives, the way we honor them is being ourselves, being our true, authentic self. And hopefully that's what our lives, what we can hear in our lives is it's okay to be ourselves and to experience this life the way we want to whether we see it as a comedy or a tragedy or you know whatever whatever the experience is that we have our own unique idiosyncratic approach to life we bring all those facets of our personality that no one else has it's uniquely our own and that's how we should live our lives and if we're listening carefully i think nothing will give us more permission to do that than our lives themselves. I feel like that's what you were saying. And I so appreciate that you honor who you are, even in whatever the environment is, you know, uh, professional, personal, whatever it is. Hi, Rebecca. I'm Vanessa again. I was just gonna say, I love that. Um, I call it being comfortable in my own skin. It's kind of what I, I would, uh, I like, I would like to be, I'm, I'm getting there. Um, I used to think that, um, I was pretty young when I went into a pretty power, you know, pretty prestige, a pretty big career. And, uh, uh, I always thought I had to look older and act older and be mature and be responsible. And all those things are good qualities, but I was, uh, really kind of like a, a nerd, <laughs> <laughs> and a goofball. <laughs> and, uh, and uh, those are good qualities, too. I don't need to be so, uh, so, uh, you know, uh, worried about those uh, getting out and, and maybe even lead with those be more, uh, be more um, authentic. But yeah, I love those reminders that uh, just, uh, just be me, the world, uh, the world needs more me, the world needs more yous, right? Just be you, the world needs you. Um, and uh, I just like that. That's a great reminder. Thanks. Thanks, guys. This this life that we've been given, and as far as we know, this is the only one we get. There may be an afterlife. We may get more times of doing this. We just don't know. No matter what we believe, we don't know. And so what we do with this one to me is what matters most is what is the most important. The most pressing question is what are we doing with our lives? And if we're not learning from them, if we're not receiving the gift that they are, you think about the potential of a gift today's February 1st, right? What if by some uh, strange strangeness, your Christmas tree is still up and there was still a gift unopened a wrapped present under your tree, whatever's in there, no matter how incredible, wonderful it is. It's, it's just potential. It's just, it has no impact on your life whatsoever. And the gift of our lives and the lessons, the great teacher that our lives, our lives are is like a wrapped present that we, you know, if we're not taking advantage of, if we're not receiving and opening ourselves up to and listening to our life as Beekner, you know, 
encourages us to do, then we're missing out on so, so, so much. And, you know, we're not getting any younger. And it's time to get serious about listening to our lives, to investing in ourselves, our lives, and getting out of our lives as much as we possibly can, realizing that time is short. And it doesn't matter where we are in life. Time is short. Listen today. I want to, I just want to, to wrap up. I'd like to read the quote again. And I know that my intention is to live this, is to do this today. And I encourage you, challenge you. And, and when I say that, I mean, Frederick Beekner is challenging us to listen to our lives. Listen to your life. See it for the fathomless mystery it is. In the boredom and pain of it, no less than in, in the excitement and gladness. Touch, taste, smell your way to the holy and hidden heart of it. Because in the last analysis, all moments are key moments. And life itself is grace. Thank you for the grace and gift of my life. Thank you. The best way I can honor it is to receive it, listen to it, and live it to the fullest that I can. And I hope you'll do the same. Thanks so much for joining me today. I hope you all have a great week and I hope to see you next Monday. Thank y'all. Have a good day. Have a great Thanks, week. Michael. Thanks, Thank Mike. you. Bye-bye. Thanks, Michael. Thank you.